Hi there, I'm Miriam and welcome to Miriam's Manor. You guys, look at what is behind me. I finished the display that I started on the live stream with you guys a couple of weeks ago. I told you that I was going to get this finished up and get it all decorated and put together and release the video for you. So here is part two of the Christmas Village setup with some of the techniques that we went over on the live stream. Now, if you were not a part of that live stream and did not see the first part of the setup, it is long I know you might want to go back and watch it but I also did try to add footage to this video to bring you up to speed with what we did in part one but if you feel like you're watching part two and you just didn't quite get your questions answered then definitely go back and look at the live stream that is called um, Christmas Village Forum 3 and it says uh, Christmas Village setup under it, I think. So check that one out, and that way it might help you better follow along with how I picked up for this particular build. So I hope you guys enjoy. I'll see you on the other side, and let me know what you think. First, I'm gonna give you a quick view of what was already done on the live stream video. I added this piece of cardboard after the live stream to create a road between the two levels. I staple gunned it to the MDF board to attach it. I will link the live stream video at the end of this one. Also, I did release another video last week that's only 10 minutes that shows you how to make these rock walls step by step, and I will also link that one as well. This is where we left off from the live stream. You can see that I made two levels out of wood. I used scrap MDF boards for the top and two by threes for the legs and just screwed the two pieces together. I already made two of the walls facing the front, so I will show you how I made those by making the walls for the side. I already measured two pieces of styrofoam and glued them onto cardboard the size of the openings. I left a few inches on the side of the cardboard so that I can staple gun that cardboard to the two by threes a little bit later. So for now, what I'm going to do is take my sculpting tool from Hot Wire Foam Factory to create rock formations into the styrofoam. So now I am done carving the rocks into the styrofoam and I'll hold this piece up to where I'm going to put this so you can see how I am going to use the cardboard to staple gun this here to the 2x3. So now I will be right back after I carve this second piece of styrofoam. So now that all of my rock formations are carved, it's time to move on to paint. And I am taking this Apple Barrel brand of paint that I just picked up at Walmart, and I'm gonna pour a little bit of it into this bowl, adding a little water to it so that I can create my black wash. Now, for those of you who always watch my videos, I know that I might sound like a broken record, but I do wanna repeat this for those who might be watching for the first time. Please, please, please do not skip this part of the process. I know we get excited to just start painting our projects right away, but the black paint is necessary and it does serve a purpose. It's going to create those black shadowy crevices in your rocks that are going to make it look more realistic so always start with a black wash first whenever you're doing a nature scene and it will definitely enhance your overall paint job so you can see I just mixed it well it's a little bit of a runny consistency like a stain and I know I'm ready to go ahead and paint So now it's time to create my first layer of gray paint. I am taking the leftover black wash and adding a little white paint to it and I will mix this well. So then I'm going to paint my last two pieces and what I'm going to do is just only wet the tip of my paintbrush and gently sweep back and forth across the top of the surface of the rocks. I'm not going to focus on trying to cover all of this black up with this first layer. I'm going to continue to add layers of gray paint 
And as I continue to add each additional layer, I'm going to get better coverage on my rock surfaces. My first layer of dark gray paint is now dry and I have already pre-mixed my second layer of gray paint off camera. I just did the same thing, added a little bit more white paint to what was already pre-existing and I'm going to paint it in the exact same manner that I did the first few layers. So this will be the last layer of gray paint that I am adding to mine, but if you feel like you still want to add more to yours, feel free to do so so that you are personalizing this for your style and your taste for your village. Both pieces are now painted and I will attach the pieces onto the wooden base with my staple gun. And I will show you in just a little while how I am going to close up this gap here. To finish off my paint job, I am taking a cap full of white paint and a small paintbrush, and I'm going to lightly dab the top ledge of each rock to create snow detail. So now I am taking this piece of cardboard that I painted gray and I'm going to staple gun it to the front part of the MDF and then I'm going to use pens to attach it to the back part of the styrofoam. So here's a look of how everything is coming along so far. I am pleased with how it's coming along. Now some of the gaps that you see here will not be visible by the time we're all done. We're going to work on getting those closed up right now. So I have my hot glue gun heated up. I am taking some snow, stretching it out a little bit, and I am going to begin to run it along the sides and the front portion of my retaining wall. Also notice that I have already just laid down flat on top of this surface my cobblestone road prior to me laying the snow. Now I will be releasing a video in the next couple of days for those of you who don't already know where to go to print off this road and also how to cut it and interlock the joints so that it looks like one continuous road. So I'm not done with this section yet, but I wanted to give you a quick look on how this is coming along. And now I'm going to move up top and do the same thing to close off the gap between the road and the styrofoam. But 
this time up in this space, I'm going to be using a combination of moss like you see here as well as the blanket snow. So I did create another ramp to connect the first and the second level that you see off to the right. And I do want to apologize because when I was making this, I thought my camera was recording, but it was not. So I took the sheet of cobblestone paper and just stapled it to a piece of cardboard and then attached it to the second level with those floral pens and just added some snow to the side like you saw me do on the other level. So this is where we're at so far. Now I have added a moss blanket to the top row to act as grass for the neighborhood I am putting on the top level. So full disclosure you guys, this platform setup that I just finished making will go in my daughter's room this year. So it's not going to look like this come Christmas time. I am purely staging this to show you guys the, the potential of what this could look like once it's done. So you will notice I am not adding figurines and extra trees and all of those other details because my daughter will design each level the way she wants it once we get a little bit closer to Christmas. Now I'm going to focus on decorating the lowest level. I am beginning with this cobblestone road that I had left over from last year. You'll notice that it doesn't go all the way to the ends, but I didn't want to print any more additional sheets just for this staging of this video. So next I'm adding this simple platform that I made last year and I do have a video on this. And I'm adding some trees, the gazebo, and a few benches. Then I will add some leftover grass mats to close up those spaces towards the end. From there I am adding the taller trees and next I am placing the church on the left hand side and now I'm going to begin to fill in this lower level with some snow to cover up the bases of the trees. And after that I am adding this figurine cart on the right to fill in a little bit of that space over there. And lastly, it is time to add the snow flurries to every single level. So I will be focusing on covering up all of the blanket of snow as well as the moss with the snow flurries. This is how it all turned out and I am so pleased with the simplicity and the beauty of the design. I feel like the techniques shown in this tutorial are easy enough for anyone to try. So remember, this tutorial is focusing on the logistics of setting up the village and not decorating it to the nine. So I simply just wanted to stage it a little bit for you guys to give you an overall completed look. And on a completely side note, it was brought to my attention that I posted the wrong page of rules for the Christmas Village contest in the Christmas Village video. So directly after this clip is over, I will be posting four different slides about the four separate categories. And again, please thank Robin Wright as he has designed these lovely roll sheets for all of us. Um, so for each category to make it easy for us to follow. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Robin. I really appreciate you. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please give me a big thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. Also, please subscribe to the channel, share the video, and click that notification bell, because again, you guys, I have tons of Christmas Village videos coming your way very shortly. Um, our next live stream video is dated September 19th, 2021, at 11 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. So I hope to see you guys all there. And until I see you again, stay safe, God bless you, and I hope to see you really soon. Bye.